What a brilliant finish to this game. I mean, Alvareza Ferruja really knows how to open up a can of you-know-what if you catch my drift. This game is, uh, again, we're continuing our look at the Vienna game as played by Alvareza Ferruja. This game is against Yannick Gozoli in uh, the European Chess Online Blitz uh, tournament from uh, November of 2020. And Ferruja has the white pieces, of course, e4, e5, knight to c3. We have the Vienna game on the board. Grandmaster Gozoli, who was rated 2608, by the way, responds with knight to f6, bishop c4, and he plays knight to e4. And this invites some very sharp chess. He grabs a pawn, and Ferruja responds with the most critical line, queen to h5, with the threat, of course, of queen takes f7 mate. His opponent, Gozoli, plays knight to d6. It defends against the threat and also hits the bishop at c4, so the bishop retreats. Now, he plays this move, bishop to e7, which is not the most critical move. Some of you who know the Vienna perhaps have heard of a line called the Frankenstein-Dracula variation, and an odd name, but uh, it's a scary line. I think that's one of the reasons why it's named after those uh, monsters. Uh, and it goes like this. Knight to c6 to defend the e5 pawn. Knight to b5. The idea you're trying to distract this knight away from the defense of f7. If knight takes knight, queen f7 would be mate. So black plays g6, then queen to f3, keeping this queen in contact with the f7 square so the knight still can't be taken. f5, queen to d5, still keeping that queen aiming at that square. After queen to e7 defending, then knight to c7 check, gets a pawn and forks the king and the rook, king d8, knight to a8, and b6. And this is the beginning of the variation. Now, looks like black is just down a whole rook, and he is. Um, and in the pre-computer era, people would play like this. And if you put this into a computer, it gives uh, white, I think, like plus one. That's it, even though he's up an entire rook at... It's like he's just up a pawn. The knight at a8 is trapped, but black has all sort of attacking potential. So that's a very wild line that they could have gone into. But instead, his opponent plays bishop to e7, a little more calm. Uh, Ferruja takes with on e5 with the queen. If he had played knight to f3 after knight c6, takes g6, takes on d6, pawn takes, and white would have nothing out of the opening. This would be a, a completely even position. So he takes with the queen. Castles, d4, gains space, knight c6, hits the queen, and the queen goes to f4. Now, something I want you, you to notice over the course of this game, this queen hovers around black's king the entire time, and that, that's very nerve-wracking. You know, even if you're a 2600-level player, if you're playing a 2700, like Alareza, of course, he's past 2800 now, but he was 2707, uh, or 2728 in this game, you still get a little nervous when your opponent's queen is always hanging around your king, and the whole game, this queen just pesters this king. Very annoying. Uh, now, Gozoli could have played here knight to a5, trying to get rid of that bishop at b3. Uh, also, bishop f6, aiming at d4, is a move, but he played the, a little more exotic line, b5. Uh, the pawn is supported by the knight at d6, so it can't just be taken by the knight at f3, uh, excuse me, at c3. He plays knight to f3, now a5, gaining space. He's not threatening to trap the bishop because the bishop can always run to the d5 square, but he is threatening to gain a critical space advantage on the queen side. So Ferruja plays a4 to limit that. And here, uh, Gozoli plays a novelty. He plays b4. Um, and it turns out this is not the most exact move. Apparently, taking the pawn is the best, and after rook takes bishop a6, and white cannot castle at the moment because the bishop controls uh, this square that the king would have to pass over to castle was the best idea. Uh, after b4, Ferruja jumps into d5 with his knight. Now the bishop goes to e6, and uh, Ferruja plays bishop to e3. Uh, computers say a more uh, critical move is knight to e5. And after bishop b5, bishop to e3, White has a very strong position. White can castle long and then play h4 and just attack on the king's side. After bishop to e3, his opponent plays bishop c4. 
In the, in the Vienna game, this light squared bishop usually goes to c4 and is very effective on this diagonal. So one of black's goals is often to trade it off. So that is what uh, black is doing here. One of the possibilities Ferruja had was to just castle long after bishop takes, pawn takes. <clears throat> These pawns are weakened, but the king can just be safe. On the, it's still fairly safe on the queen side. Bishop uh, c4 is what Ferruja played. Knight takes, and then he just castles. Ferruja could have played queen to c7 here, grabbing a pawn. The pawn at b2 is poisoned, by the way. If black were to take it, then knight to d2. And the knight controls this square, and the knight at b2 has nowhere to go. Ferruja could just castle, play the rook at f1 to b1, and the knight would not be able to escape. He castles short, bishop to d6, and black has played well, and is still competitive. It's still pretty much an equal position, but this queen is still hovering around the black king, and it, it's uh, oftentimes tactics pop up when that, that happens. The queen goes to f5, a knight could go to g5, maybe have some threats here. So he plays f6 to keep control of the g5 square. Queen to d3 attacks the knight at c4, so the knight takes the bishop at e3. The knight still can't grab the pawn because of queen to b3, threatening the knight and a very nasty and devastating discovery along the long diagonal. So Gazzoli takes the bishop, knight takes rook to e8, rook f to e1, bishop to f8 to clear the way for the advance of the d-pawn and also to keep g7 defended, queen to c4 check, king to h8, queen to d5, knight e7. Now we talked about how that qu queen just, he just can't shake it. Well watch this move. Ferruja plays queen to f7, just takes the queen and puts it right into the heart of his opponent's position. d5, h4. And what he wants to do here is advance this pawn to h6, forcing the g7 pawn to move, and then f6 would be left undefended. He's trying to undermine those dark squares on the king's side. c6, h5. And so he can't let that happen, so black plays knight to g8 to control h6. The knight goes to f5, knight to e7, and he can't play h6 here because actually we would just lose the knight. So he plays the other knight to back up this knight to, to replace it when it's captured. Knight takes f5, knight takes f5. And the best move for black here, as it turns out, is to just play rook to e4, it looks like and to create an anchor there. And after h6, g6, the queen at d8 is defending the f6 pawn for the time being. After rook takes d8, d4, knight g7, queen e7, uh, this looks like a fairly equal, uh, but still unbalanced position. But instead, Gazzoli plays queen to c8, attacking the knight at f5, and it turns out that that's a mistake. Ferruja plays h6, and he cannot take the knight at f5. If he plays queen takes f5, then it's actually a forced mate. Pawn takes with check, forcing bishop, the bishop to capture. Rook takes e8, check. Rook takes, queen takes, and the bishop would have to go to f8, and after queen takes bishop, it's checkmate with that queen that he has not been able to, to shake for the entire game. So instead of taking the knight, he plays g6. Now, Here's a beautiful move. Now, the whole game, that queen has been irritating the black king, just sort of sitting there, waiting to deliver the coup de grace. And here is the move. Now, I'll give you a second to pause the video if you want to try to discover what the move is. That's right. He plays rook to e7, threatening queen takes h7 mate. Now, the rook can be taken in two different ways, but none of those save black's position. Obviously, if he takes with the bishop, then just queen to g7 is checkmate. The queen is supported by the pawn at h6. If instead he plays rook e7, which is what was played, then knight takes e7, and Ferruja threatens queen to g8 mate. He threatens capturing the queen at c8. And of course, again, if the bishop takes, then queen to g7 mate. So instead, his opponent just plays bishop h6 after knight c8. The game was over, and he resigned. So 
Again, a game where he doesn't get some big advantage out of the opening, but he just keeps his pieces there. He keeps his queen hovering around the king, and when that happens, you just get a feeling something bad's going to happen, and then the brilliancy, boom, rook to e7. I hope you've enjoyed this game. Join us again soon at Chess Dog. Goodbye.